and welcome to Loaded Landscapes. My name's Simon Plant and today we're going to be looking at gradients within Lightroom. So for those of you who were old enough to be around film like myself, um, gradient filters probably don't need any explanation at all. But for those younger viewers, I just thought I'd touch on the uh, reasoning behind uh, the gradient filter in Lightroom and its background. So back in the days of film, um, when digital imaging really wasn't in the mainstream, uh, it was only available really on high-end, high-paying advertising jobs, and therefore the machines were sort of a million dollars to uh, buy and to use for digital imaging. Either that or they were hand retouch. It was a very expensive business. So. Photography really was a craft in those days. You needed to uh, really know your film and know the limitations of the film uh, in terms of how much uh, light it can um, actually capture in terms of contrast. And obviously you had to go into the scene like this in front of us on the screen and measure the sky and also measure the other areas to try and work out whether the light was going to be too much to capture in one exposure on that piece of film. So this is where gradient filters come in. Gradient filters were used to control that contrast within the scene. They would typically be slipped over the lens and brought down to darken the sky area and this would in effect reduce the contrast um, reaching the film and capture the brightest highlights of the sky down to the darkest tones in the actual landscape. So that's um, uh, that's what they were used for. They're still used today and they're still useful for landscape photography. Um, but obviously as well we have a lot more options these days. We've got previews on the back of the camera, you've got your histogram so you can check the scene as you're shooting and obviously if there's any problems then obviously assess, assess that and from and there you can either whip out a gradient filter and put that on or you could do a HDR um, explosion blending that sort of thing or use the gradient filter within Lightroom which is what I'm going to show you today so this is the image we're going to work on today. It's a picture I captured in Portugal um, a little uh, while back. And uh, this is a typical uh, scene um, that uh, would probably make use of uh, gradients in post-production. Now, I've got a couple of exposures to show you here. This is actually, I shot this one as a, um, a panoramic. And I also breached the exposures, so I've got several to choose from. The reason for that was I, it gives me options when I come back off uh, off a location. I've got options to do um, an exposure blend if I want to, and uh, or pick out my sort of optimum exposure. Now it's very important, I think, that you know your camera, know how it works. Now I know that with my camera, it's a 1DS Mark II, it's quite an old camera, but I've used it for donkey's years, and I know that I can dial in so much over exposure and that will protect the shadows which are quite important and I know that in uh, in Photoshop or Lightroom uh, because I shoot raw I can recover so much overexposure so that gives me the best file for my needs I only do that because I know my camera so it's very important that you know your camera and then you can make a, a real good judgment when you're actually shooting what you're going to be able to get away with, whether you can overexpose a little bit more and really get the best capture you can. So this is my um, this is my exposure uh, that works best for this image. But as you can see, the sky is a little bit on the bright side. We're shooting straight into the uh, the sun at dawn, and so it's bleaching out behind this uh, behind this hillside. It's not excessive, and I mean I would be disappointed with this capture, but it could do have been darkened just a little bit. Right, so we're in Photoshop, um, or sorry, Lightroom 5.6, which is the uh, current version in Creative Cloud for that. And uh, we can access the uh, gradient tool, which is what we're using today, by just clicking up here um, or pressing M on your keyboard. And we get the gradient tool um, control panel show up. To get the gradient on screen, you literally... Um, uh, you'll get the crosshairs at the top of the screen or wherever you uh, decide to put it on the on the image you literally just click and we just drag down you want to make sure the gradient covers uh, a good part of the image right from the very top down somewhere like that is about right if it's not quite squ uh, square enough like this one isn't you can just hover over the control point in the middle and you get these little rotation arrows a bit, little bit fiddly but you can just try and nudge it around like that as I said it's 
not always that easy. Um, and like I said, make sure the gradient comes down and covers the whole sky area and down a little bit to uh, below the horizon. So we've got lots of options in here. Let's let's fix the first problem. Um, we want to darken the sky. So we got the exposure and we've got contrast, highlights, all that business. So what I normally start off with is just bringing down the exposure slightly, like so. And also then the highlights recovery, just for those very light, delicate tones, the highlights. And already that's made quite a big difference. Um, there's some other options here. You can obviously change the temperature. So if you want to make the sky a little more bluer, you could do that. Um, but I'm going to keep it a little bit more on the warm side because it is a sunrise. And that's more fitting. Um, the other options, you've got a shadow slider, which won't really... Um, affect our sky so much in this image it does a little bit but not much but more importantly if you watch the uh, cliff there because our gradients going into that cliff we're darkening that and I don't want to do that so we're going to keep the, the shadow slider set at zero um, clarity is a mid-tone contrast slider so it, uh, it can crisp the image up it almost acts like a sharpening effect to the image now the good thing about this I think um, if you look at the sky you can see that going uh, getting a little bit sharper now but I actually sometimes we we'll use negative clarity because it often softens the sky. So if you've got lots of clouds in there, you can get some nice effects. So have a play around with that one. You can get some nice effects. Um, I'm going to leave that on minus 10 just to soften up a little bit. Saturation, when we're darkening um, skies and stuff with a gradient tool, you do often pick up extra colour. And sometimes you don't want that, um, so you can use this um, to dial that down a little bit. We haven't really picked up that much in this image. In fact, we can even just increase that a tiny little bit. Somewhere around 8, I think, looks good. So keep that in mind. If you're picking up extra colour that you don't like, you can drop down a saturation. And again, you've got sharpness. Again, we can we can drop this. If you want to keep the sky nice and soft, um, you can drop the sharpness. You don't you know, always need to sharpen in a, in a positive fashion. You can also use it in a negative fashion. Again, don't really want to mess about with that too much because I do my sharpening uh, after I've uh, retouched the image. Uh, again, you've got noise and more and defringe. You can also click on the color swatch here, and if you want to add a little bit more of a color uh, wash to the image like that, like a warm-up filter, you can do that, and you can also set the saturation of that. So you can really go to town if you want to. So quite a few functions in there. So once you're done, I'm just going to drop that down. I don't really want too much in there. Uh, once you've done that, you just literally click on it again or press M again and that's it. So I want to show you another image, which is the same image game, but this one was uh, another stop overexposed, and it was one stop too far um, if you wanted to try and capture um, the landscape and the sky and then darken it uh, with the with the gradient filter. And let me show you why. You can only darken the information that's there, which kind of makes sense because if it's uh, if the information's been blown out from your capture, there's nothing you're going to do to recover that. And let me show you uh, what will happen. Um, I'm going to grab the uh, gradient filter again, drag down like we did last time, and let's just drop down the exposure. And on this side, um, it's working quite well, but nearer the uh, where the sun is rising you see it's just gonna go dark and no matter what we do with that image it's just gonna look muddy and a mess because you your obviously camera can only capture so much and then unlike with film with film when you when the exposure started to get too far and overexposed it would gradually uh, gradient out to pure white with digital that doesn't happen you just get this massive big drop off um, and it uh, looks awful so um, in this particular image if this is the only image I shot on this day um, then I would have to look at compositing a sky into this scene so it wouldn't be the end of the world but if I wanted to make life easy and, and use a sky that was already in the scene uh, this image would have gone too far so this is where I mean you can um, 
you can recover so much but you need to know the limitations of your camera in terms of how much light you can capture so just be aware of that I didn't mention when you put a gradient on the uh, on the image if you want to get rid of it you can just hit the backspace and just uh, just take that off or I think the other option if I remember correctly not that I use it is just to right click and you can just delete it like there so there's a couple of tips there's one more thing I want to show you and the final thing I just want to show you very quickly and this might be plainly obvious but I'm going to mention it anyway you don't actually need to use gradients just on sky areas let's take this image this was shot uh, at almost pitch black very late very long exposure with this water coming in and this lovely sky moving across uh, this bay and if I wanted to I could draw a gradient from the bottom up and let's say I decided I just wanted to lighten this uh, this sea area a little bit obviously we can just come in and do the same sort of thing again bring up the exposure maybe just bring up the brightness etc and uh, and just have a play around just to kind of bring that out a little bit more so don't have to limit your gradients in just for the sky and also you can obviously bring them in from a uh, various angle you can also obviously add you know new gradients so let's say I've got uh, let's say we've got the one for the uh, for the bottom here and I'm really happy with that and that's the side that I wanted to add another one I just click on new and that will give me another one in the same image maybe I want to come in and just brighten or add a bit more contrast to the sky here bring back down the uh, saturation a little bit and there you go and then you can highlight the previous one to adjust that one or go back to the one for the sky so you don't have to uh, restrict yourself to one gradient per image and you don't have to restrict it to one certain angle so I hope you've enjoyed this video it's quite a short one but I think I've packed in quite a bit of information there some of it you may not want to know perhaps you're not interested about the old days of film but I do think there's a good point to take away from this um, in Photoshop it's an amazing tool and it can uh, do amazing Amazing things uh, once you master it but rubbish in rubbish out so what I mean by that is you know learn learn about your camera and uh, if if it means you get a better capture by using a filter um, on the camera then do that if however you prefer to spend uh, time in uh, in post-production in Lightroom or Photoshop um, and uh, use the filters in there that's great but you still need to know your limitations of your camera so there we have it thanks for watching and I'll catch you soon cheers